reaction, we use a catalyst as a quencher and at the both component of the grease system. The grease system is contained in our reagent A and B. So this is the end of production, the oxidation of hydroxamide. A methemoglobin, when react with the H2O2, it forms the oxyferous species, and that species is combined with the hydroxamide and produce oxidation products, and methemoglobin is regenerated. To detect that oxidation products, we use the grease reagents. Can go back to the previous one? Yes. Okay. So th this is the reaction that, that takes place, right? Yes. Okay. So what do you have in your three different components, right? Yes. First we add our methemoglobin and then we add then we add when H2O2, then it forms the oxyferal compound. And over there, when we add hydroxamides, at that time it produces like nitrite, which is as an oxidation product, and the methemoglobin is regenerated into the reaction. As the concentration of the H2O2 is more, 5 millimolar, so we use catalyst to stop that reaction. So, so the, what happened to, so go, let's go to the next slide. What happened to the hydroxamate in this reaction? The hydroxamate is converted into the oxidation product, like anode, nitrite. It releases anode. Yes, right? okay. nitrite. So it gets, it gets depleted. Depleted, right. yes. What happened to the H2O2? The H2O2 is con uh, converted in, uh, 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 regenerate and make my globin again. Right, so it regenerate it, it regenerate the my, my globin, mm -hmm. right? It, or generating the uh, higher oxidation state of the yes. of my globin. Uh, so it also gets depleted. depleted. What about the, the uh, my globin? The my globin is remain the same. In the concentration remains the same. same. So it's catalytic. Yes, okay. catalytic. So now let's look at the concentrations. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so but that's why the concentration of the met is, is very low, low right? You mm -hmm. don't need it. A lot of it, okay. Yeah. Whereas the H two O two, is in more amounts. Right, because so it has to be in excess. Okay. Um, now, how do how do we determine which concentration do we want to use here? For example, how did you how can one determine or how did you determine that that ten micromolar of myoglobin is enough or not enough? What's the limitation? What's yeah, because I I tried with the lower concentration too. And what but happened? The, but the rate of the end of production, uh, it's not showing that Jovens was not clear. Right. So, so we cannot detect the lower, if the methemoglobin is lower than 10 mi micromolar, then we cannot detect the end of production. Correct. So we the limitation see. was the limitation of your uh, instrument detection? Yes, detection. Right. right. So if you were using a different instrument, you, you may have been able that, to do it, yeah, right? Yeah, may or may not. Because what, what was different between the two instruments? Uh, because the diode, the path length is more like as a 10, and in the um, I'm using the nano drop spectrophotometer, it has a path length of one, so it's th that's the one difference. millimeter versus 10 millimeters, so yes. it's a factor of 10. 10. Right. Okay, and so, for the B, um, this is the grease reaction to determine um, the oxidation products, which is nitrite. Uh, the sulfonylamide is a solution A of the grease reagent and NADD, which is called n one naphthyl ethylene diamine dihydrochloride, which is the solution B of the grease reagent. When um, N nitride is react with the sulfonylamide, converts into the diazone, and then when it can uh, re get react with the NADD, it produces the azodine, which, can, which we can measure at 540 nanometers. So to begin with the experiment, uh, we need to know that uh, how long we have to wait for the color development. And for that, we did this assay on the diode array using uh, sodium nitride and grease reagent. So we can see from the figure that after 20 minutes, the, graph is, um, um, the color reaches the plateau level. So in each and every reaction, I will wait for 20 minutes. And and the standard curve for the grease reagent. Over here, I use a different different concentration from the stock solution of sodium nitrate, uh, smaller as smaller as 20 micromolar to the 250, and I find the extinction coefficient of uh, 0 0.0051, and uh, error bar is plus or minus uh, 0 0.002. Over here, how reproducible are the measurement of the nanodrop spectrophotometer? That we can answer from here. You can see over here the slope of the hydroxamic acid. I tried four different compounds. The one is acetohydroxamic acid, and then benzohydroxamic acid, hydroxyurea, and the Saha. 
you can see the slope are similar. So we can say that uh, nano drop, um, um, the result obtained from the nano drop is reproducible and it has an error but it's uh, not larger than 5%. We can say that. Okay. But, but before, even before you even did this experiment, when you just approached the nano drop to begin with, you tested it even uh, with, the control, basic way, yes, right? with the How control, yes, with the control and uh, with the 100 micromolar concentration. Because when I use 200, it's, it's too big, and when I use lower, then it's right. it's not showing anything. So, so I so try with the 100 micromolar concentration, and I did the same thing. I, I try like two times, three times, and like 30 minutes, the same thing, and it gives me the same absorbance. It's not like exactly same, but it gives me um, difference of 0.05 or something. It's not more than that. Right. So so actually, it gave you. So that was the first step to yes, just to see how reproducible step. it is when you just use. A known concentration yes. that should so be I tested reproduce. with the control as well as one uh, with the sample too. Right. And the error there was less than 5%. Less than right? 5%. And here it's about 5%, yes. right? It's but much smaller than 5%. And the reason is because here you have more. I, I did like four, and this, these are average of uh, four four trials actually. Right. Those so four is average of four four. So right. But, but if you go back, this 5% represents not just the error of the instrument. Uh, it represents everything. all the errors in your experiment. Together, it represents yes. your pipetting error, fluctuation in the um, errors in, in the concentration. Maybe the drop. Right. Everything. In the pipetting and, then, and in the measurements. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that tells you that um, the overall um, yeah, this is accuracy of your work was right. good because your error is, you can't expect to get anything less than 5%. Less than 5%. So, so really, it, you, that means that you really did a good job in that. And is this the best way to analyze the small sample of uh, how to obtain the chemicals? Yes, because uh, with the nano drop, we have, we have to use just one drop. So if it's 200 microliter, we have solution, we can measure 10 times, so we have 10 points. So it's the best way. And if the sample is expensive, we can use with the small, um, cons uh, with the small, um, small amount. Here are the results. The results are showing the one with acetohydroxamic acid I showed you. The benzyl hydroxamic acid, hydroxyurea, saha, and this is the overall from, for, from the four of the compound, the average from the four. From here, you can see the nitric oxide production as a function of time. The hydroxyurea produces more N, and the saha is produced the lowest amount of N. This is N release rate for the hydropolar compound use. The N production rate have error bars of uh, plus or minus 0 0.002 micromolar per minute. You, see, you can see for hydroxyurea is 3.09 micromolar per minute and for benzohydroxamic acid it's 1.91 uh, acetohydroxamic acid is 1.08 and for the Saha is 0.882 micromolar per minute. What are the structural and chemical features of the different HPCs make this rate different? Over here you see uh, hydroxyurea has a fast state and release. You see over here the hydroxyurea has the smallest structure. So the smallest the compound is the higher the end of production and the larger the molecule will have a slower the oxidation rate. The hydroxamide has to make a contact with the heme group inside the myoglobin. The smaller molecule will get easy access to the heme molecule. So the conclusion is the Saha has the slowest NO release rate and um, not the NO production is not the primary function of the Saha. The primary function we can conclude that the as the histone deacetylase inhibition. The relatively slow and release rate means that the Saha is more resistant to oxidation. So it is a long lasting drug, so we can give a few doses, not too frequent doses. You can use like one or two doses for the cancer patient. And thank you everybody, and all Professor Samuni Jorge, and even Dr. Capitan, this is not here, I thank you for you too.